Hello, everybody, and welcome to yet another episode of the CXO Show, uh, favorite time of my week. Today, I have my friend Dinesh with us, and I'm very, Hi. very excited to have this particular conversation. For those of you all watching the show for the first time, the CXO Show features some of India's most successful professionals, people that have done exceedingly well um, in their careers. And of course, Dinesh is one of those people who have done exceedingly well in their careers. And the objective for listeners is for them to be able to pick up something which is practical, real, implementable from this particular show. Um, coming from these particular professionals that more or less run the economy. And while we call it the CXO show, as we are a learning company, our clear favorites are often the HR heads and the learning and development heads, because these are the people that we love the most. Uh, maybe because we get business from them, but uh, we yeah we we like uh, the HR and L&D um, people the most. And 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 truth be told, I also feel that uh, the HR and L&D community uh, has a lot of insights on careers uh, because they're always involved with either getting new people in their system or really have a close eye on the existing people in their particular system, right? So they can share some really interesting insights with professionals both young and old and that's why we love featuring these people on the CXO show. Dinesh, are you happy to be here? Hi, hi Swapnil. Thank you. Thank you for having me here and uh, and honestly what better on a Friday. <laughs> so I'm, I'm sincerely happy to be here and, uh, and, and interact with you. Got it. So I'm going to do one thing which is which is slightly formal and then we're going to go back like we discussed to a very candid, honest fun discussion. I'm going to uh, you know, read your introduction for people so that they know you slightly better before we start this particular engagement. Dinesh Bojwani is the head of human resources at Star Union Daichi Life Insurance. He's responsible for the people and HR tech strategy for 6,000 plus employees in the organization. Under his HR leadership, the company was recognized by Golden Peacock for HR practices and was one of the top 100 companies to work for in the BFSI sector in FY2223. When it comes to the BFSI industry, Dinesh has more than two decades of HR experience and has been associated with organizations like Indus in Bank, Tata AI Life Insurance and ICICI Lombard General Insurance before joining Star Union Daichi. Be it retail, broking, or insurance, Dinesh has been instrumental in developing and implementing HR strategies across industries. With an MBA in human resource management, Dinesh is also a student mentor and a TED Ed talk facilitator in addition to being an on the industry panel of the BFSI Skill Sector Council of India. Welcome to the show, Dinesh. It's always a pleasure for me to interact with you offline whenever I have the few times. Um, and I'm Absolutely. glad we're doing it on this particular show. And, you know, when I meet a lot of HR leaders, um, uh, very often I don't actually, I've not actually been on their floor, uh, you know, and I've had the good fortune of being on the Star Union Daichi 4 for, uh, for, a, for an initiative we launched together. Um, and as an HR head, I, you know, I could see that you've really been instrumental in building a really good culture um, and a really good, for want of a better word, vibe uh, at uh, Star Union Daichi. Um, so yeah, good job there. Thank you, thank you, Supnil. And, uh, once again, uh, thank you for this this generous uh, introduction here. And uh, and honestly, once again, I am happy to be here and interacting with you. Uh, although always in private, in person meeting is better. Yes, yeah, yes, 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 yes. We, we're we, happy we, to have you at the launch of our uh, our yeah. upgrad initiative, which is yeah. which is part of our. Yeah, you know, higher studies or higher education policy for students. Yeah, and um, a lot of inputs that we have drawn from Upgrad, uh, you know, have have given a complete uh, an element of strategy and Thank how you. it can be implemented to uh, you know to us by you. So a lot of ideas that your young team has also generated for us. Thank you Thank very you. much for that. Thank you. Thank you. It's always good to hear that. Dinesh, before we, we, we go any further, the first thing that I want you to run the audience through is your journey, probably right from your, you know, your college and when you get out of, got out of college and to your this journey of becoming an HR head. Of course, I've read it out in terms of the companies that you've been at, but you know, coming from you, they'll be, I guess, more fun for the audience and they'll be able to connect with you a little more. 
absolutely fair uh, so i'll start it may take a few minutes uh, you know uh, to to cover this uh, this journey i'll try to be yeah. brief and uh, yeah so uh, i'm actually from uh, from a city called indore which is also known as mini mumbai mm. mini bombay then and mini mumbai now and, uh, and it's a sort of a cosmo culture there and mm. uh, so we all most of my education has happened there uh, studied in kv for 12 years and then uh, then graduated and then post graduated also but during this period uh, i got this opportunity to to play football at a national level to to enjoy bike rides and uh, you know and and what not mm. and uh, and i i must i now in the hindsight when i realize uh, i think that was a very very important part of mm. uh, part of growing up you know it's not only always uh, that you have to go to college and school and score marks and blah blah mm. blah but then there is something else to it there is college life and then there is you know what not so i also uh, attempted uh, cds and i was through but then there is there are certain things that you know uh, certain things which are not acceptable you know mm. physically to so so you know you you i have curved legs you know mm-hmm. so so that's a disqualification there God. but then that's how it started otherwise i would have been uh, in the ota you know with with indian army mm. so, so that was that but then when i started my career i'll straight away jump to this uh, you know other than the extra curricular activities that everyone goes through mm. i started my career with an it organization an it organization uh, when y2k was in the boom Mm. it was the industry then and mm. uh, these small locations smaller towns did not have many opportunities then now mm. there, there are plenty of opportunities and people find opportunities you know the young generation especially but then it started here in earlier in delhi then here in mumbai after that it company i i landed up an opportunity in ics lombard and that's when the career started mm. and that's where uh, uh, that's where self learning clubbed with mentoring Mm. you know by the head of hr there or by the senior leaders of certain uh, certain accomplishments mm. it started there and uh, is it one thing uh, which which has stayed with me is that culture that particular culture promotes uh, uh, promotes learning on the job mm. you know they will give you an opportunity they will throw you to the far end and then they will see whether you can really succeed Mm. Uh, they will not allow you to fail because system is too big uh, and those kind of systems don't allow anyone to fail but mm. the empowerment one thing that has stayed with me mm. and uh, and since then maybe because those formative years that has stayed with me and and i not only practice that but i also feel that other people in order to make mark mm. uh, also yearn for it also mm. feel do well when they are empowered so that particular mm. thing is you know has has kept me going Mm. that's one another thing uh, you know in in learning has happened everywhere it's not that uh, there have been failures uh, when i worked for uh, these organizations and there have been very very tough moments instances thrown at by the micro macro mm. situations and the micro situations both on the job and and of the job in the economy but good things have happened and that organization uh, would has a deep imprint here you know in mm. in the psyche and what i do today uh, followed by uh, there have been a couple of small stints but very very meaningful stints on the way we've enjoyed not only not only you know not only working but also generating wealth because you have to mm. really stay put with an organization in order to build something mm. and when you build something yeah. these organizations including sud life they reward mm. you handsomely but mm. learnings in the structured fashion started there followed by tata which was also under a great mentor in mm. opportunities and everywhere what i see the great organizations have 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 empowered their people they mm. allowed them to do mistakes they mm. allowed them to learn in a structured as well as in an unstructured fashion mm. although uh, and in in learning happens there mm. so uh, so i'm i'm grateful to each one of them including su life that has so you know handling zonal profiles and blah 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 here is the here is the company you know where i i got what i have actually yearned for have 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 been working towards you know which is where i said okay now let's let's you know at some point of time i was become the head of hr of for a medium sized company first mm-hmm. and here is that opportunity that has come to me through mm. it's really life and i'm absolutely enjoying it 
absolutely wanting to do certain things for the people, the young workforce that is joining us. Mm. And uh, an upgrade or signing up with upgrade is one such initiative because while mm. unstructured learning can continue to happen, but mm. people who are already riding, uh, you know, a, a, a very very fast horse, yeah, uh, they would want this to happen in a very structured fashion and very fast. Yes, generation different generation is very different from what we were. Absolutely. So, absolutely enjoying, uh, you know, what what one should be. One should be enjoying and creating something for it, something for some other people. Amazing, so, amazing. So, have you? Uh, where did this uh, love for HR come from? Was it something that just happened by mistake when you were in college, or did something really lead to that uh, love for HR in some way? Okay, I'll be very honest. Uh, yeah, I was uh, cut out for sales, is what I was told. Therefore, yeah. the natural choice was uh, go for marketing. Until mm. date, people have said, you know, you should have joined sales. I don't know why. I'm I'm mm. yet to realize why. What have they seen, or mm. what have they realized, or maybe my interactions are, uh, are are hinting towards you know that mm. side of the career. So even mm. mentors at that point of time said, must join sales marketing, mm. and therefore, I mean, join sales as a professional. So therefore, marketing was the natural choice. Mm. So to be very honest, this happened accidentally. I don't know under what weakness or strength, but this decision came out. Mm. And I cannot, you know, attribute to this, attribute a decision to join HR or choose choose HR as, as a subject or as mm. a specialization during the management graduation, post-graduation days. Mm. But, uh, but I don't know, it happened. Mm. And after that, uh, after that also in, you know, in, in, in the weaker times or the weaker moments, mm. uh, there is a thought. Why should we not, you know, choose? So, so there I, you know, at, at, there are mid-level, mid, mid-age or mid-life mm. crisis as we call it. Similarly, mid-career crisis. So I, I mean, it's not that I was, I, I, I was unemployed or I was looking out for a, an opportunity, but there are confusions, you see. Yeah. So there is, always, you know, in, in this 1.5 uh, yeah. kgs of jelly, you know, you, you continue <laughs> to think. Yeah. So, yeah. so, so there I approached a coach and I said, okay, mm. I, 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 whether I'm adding value or not adding any value, mm. I would want to do something which is tangible, which is contributing mm. maybe. Yeah. So he, he said, okay, even within HR, you can yeah. have your own PNL and balance sheets and all that. Mm. So why don't you create such? Why don't you have SLS? Why don't you start billing, you know, your own clients within and, and the opportunity and the authority as the head of HR or, uh, you know, the distribution head of HR, then it allowed me to do that. And mm. then the gamification of the job happened. You got know, in it. Some sense, in my own got mind. It. Got it. So, so although it happened accidentally, but I'm perfectly enjoying it today. If someone, if somebody would ask me to to change shift, uh, probably the first immediate programmed response will be, "No, why should I?" Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so basically, you got into it. There's no specific reason that got you into it, and of course, like all people, you've had your own uh, mid-career crisis always, where you know you're always questioning stuff, but. Um, decided to stay put on HR, and I think rightly so. Uh, I think you you're you're a fantastic HR head. Got it. I heard a couple of things from you that I I thought were very very interesting. Right. I, I think you spoke about the importance of learning on the job, um, which happens when you are empowered by someone. Right. Uh, when the organization or the leaders empower you. Tell me, how do you drive that same thought process in your current organization as an HR head or as a leader of people, as a HR leader, how do you drive this process? Okay. So, so Pnil, there is a, you know, there is always a background to this. You yeah. are, uh, if you are, if you are continuously learning, mm. uh, learning, uh, you know, by reading, by observing mm. people, by interacting mm. with people. And if you are really learning, listening and learning, mm. uh, the change is bound to happen, you know, mm. things will happen. So I'll tell you about, uh, you know, I was also very, very, you know, sort of a, when I started my career, when I started managing teams, I thought uh, direction is the only way to prescribe mm. something for people and they will do it. Mm. That's how it started. Mm. Over a period of time, things have changed. Things mm. have changed because, uh, because you receive feedback. Uh, things have changed because you also do not want to do things to your, mm. you know, do not want to be the recipient of things mm. that you don't like. Therefore, mm. similarly, people, other people also think that 
this is not the treatment that I should be getting. Mm. You know, that's also one big realization that happens to people. Then you learn, then you see other leaders. Then you, they also demonstrate, exhibit different kind of competencies, different kind of behavioral aspects. Mm. And, uh, and that's where you learn. So this empowerment thing, you know, when I realized that, look, I only flourish when I get an opportunity to do things without any fear, without, without any sort of, you know, mm. uh, people's fear or people's opinion, you know, FOPO, uh, fear mm. of people's opinion, mm. you know. So if you do something without that, your opportunities are better. And I'll tell you a personal uh, you know, anecdote. I, uh, when I, this is about my football days, you know, 11th and 12th standard. And, uh, and we used to play Kasli Ball Trophy kind of uh, events. That was the KV thing, you know, the, mm -hmm. the, the best of the KV, mm -hmm. uh, Kendri Vidyalaya Sangathan things. Now, in a particular game, the coach chose me uh, as the last person in that mm -hmm. game. Because the game before, uh, you know, that was where I missed scoring and I was playing as the center forward and blah, blah. Now, when when the person chose me, I still remember the name of the coach. His name was Mr. Ketwas. And he chose and he said, okay, we give you an opportunity, one more opportunity. That's when I thought, let me play fearlessly. Mm. There is nothing to lose. Mm. And, uh, and this developed in my head first. Mm. That was probably one of the best games that I delivered to my school, mm. you know, during those days. Mm. I feel this clubbed with what happened to me in Lombard, Tata AIG, Reliance Retail and Anderson mm. Bank and all that has shaped mm. and has given me that immense freedom to operate. Now, how mm. do I practice it here? Mm. You know, leading from the front, which is an army style of leading to mm. what leaders of the industry now are coming up with their own narratives and thought processes that leading yeah. from behind is very, very important. Trust yeah. me, leading from behind is very, very important. Yeah. I have some great people in my team. I have rather all of them are, uh, you know, great guys, great leaders mm -hmm. at, at number two level. Mm -hmm. They, they, uh, one of, one of whom you also, or your team also is dealing with the punker. Mm -hmm. They are such people that give them an opportunity and they would replace you if immediately mm. not because of any other reason but in competence yeah. what the way would want to so you yeah. just have to watch and give them the right type of motivation give them the right type of push support mm. them when they are sulking or when mm. they are feeling bad or when they mm. fail they mm. do not succeed and this is not in theory and i'm not saying this for the sake of saying this opinion. yeah i know I honestly know. this is what i've experienced and each of these guys the four or five mm. people that that i may call uh, work with me closely mm. have uh, can do immense and have been doing immense they yeah. take full responsibility full load mm. full full confusion there yeah. is no there is no doubt in their mind they they are ready to take challenges you yeah. know they can go for you on battle mm. and, and you just have to watch and support them at the right time yeah i think this has been working well yeah and they sort of have you know will make you redundant and that's what has been happening with me so really? I think uh, what I've received is what I am trying to give back. Mm. And it is not it is not about me. It is about them because they also yeah. want to make an impact. They yeah. also are here to succeed. They are also yeah. here to be leaders and they are also here to lead functions and become HODs and, and whatnot and keep growing. They mm. also want to have a different kind of second career because they are mm. all very young. You know, mm. at 40, they would have had what I have. have uh, I am having at 45, 48 now. Mm. So what will they do for the rest of the 20 years? Correct. It has to be something else for them. Yeah. So I love them to fly. And, yeah. Uh, and and apply those learnings is very very important. Amazing. So so many things come to come to my mind when you said this thing, right? So you know the first um, uh, there's this lovely quote where it says the the job of the leader is not to create more followers but is to create more leaders, right? Uh, I, I love that thought because very often leaders think that their job is to create followers, but no, it's you know, the job as a leader is to create more leaders. And I think through the way, and the number one way to do that is by empowering people, right? And, uh, you know, making them fearless in some way. Uh, but, but, you know, but a big question is saying, how do you, you need to be fearless in some way for you to be able to make them fearless, right? So that's going to be one of my kind of follow-up questions to you. The other thought that comes to my mind, another quote that says 90% of what we call management is us getting in the way of people doing their job right um, I love that thought right 90% of what we call management is us getting in the way of people doing their job so very often um, I think it's it's immensely important that we proactively get out of people's way 
uh, and I think our other job as leaders often is to 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 remove the barricades, the barriers that are there between people and doing their job. If we can just do that, right? Remove the barricades, remove those things. Whenever whenever they need us to remove them, I think that is uh, extremely extremely important, right? And of course, the third third thing that came to my mind, right, as a as somebody that you know. Uh, conducted and trained a lot of people on the subject of leadership. Uh, you know, I'd often just ask leaders one thing. I'd say, you know, when you delegate a job, uh, uh, you know, does your team member feel that he's doing your job or does he feel that he's doing his own job, right? I say that makes the whole difference in terms of how they perceive and how they do stuff. If they feel that they're doing your job, which is the leader's job, they they view it in a certain way. If they believe they're doing their own job, they totally there's a totally different way of doing that right and that so much of that depends on how you go about creating the right culture how you go about delegating in turn how you go about giving feedback but but it's such a such an important thought i i wonder whether you have any comments on this so you have actually you know put everything very very beautifully here in in, in these three key points you're yeah. right uh, one is uh, first of all uh, you know my feeling is uh, that when you come to a job mm. and if you think and if you feel that you have come to a job mm. you know you fail yeah <laughs> it's 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 the absolute ownership you know which can keep you going if you mm. come to the job to think you are coming to the job mm. is where you it's a package you know Correct. it's more than 12 hours we also spend a lot of time dreaming actually dreaming about what you are yeah, doing yeah, 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 so yeah. so it's not the job and job has job can have a have a price tag correct but uh, but then your passion does not have people come here not not because an assignment is given to them but people yeah. come here because uh, and and i've seen those are the winners mm. uh, can i say that we are there no because you will also get certain people you know who are coming here yeah. for money there are yeah. certain set of people who are coming here to socialize also that's also yeah. a club you know yeah. Yeah. And, and let's not forget people also come to the office to forget their sorrows at home yeah. which is all right yeah. you know to avoid plights at home which is also yeah. all right yeah. certain yeah. set of people can be seen in cafeterias and libraries yeah. and you know those places yeah. which is also okay and uh, because that's a part of your culture you cannot have culture without uh, without such things. And then there are certain people who are self-driven, who don't come mm. here for money alone. Mm. Money is not the motivator. Maybe mm. they come here. There are, I've seen many leaders like this. Mm. I've seen many, many managers like this. I've also mm. seen many people at staff level who are ready to give everything to. Mm. You know. But, but at a micro level within the team, if, if you trust mm. and if you are trusted, mm. then you do not have to artificially induce something that mm. look you, you have this job to be done. Mm. Mm. They will really, they will really, really pick up whatever you think is the organizational agenda. So how mm. we start here is even in those, you know, AOPs or annual operating plans. And I'm using mm. some of these formal jargons, mm. which are used everywhere else. Also, if those teams are formed naturally, if those projects are picked up by them naturally, and if mm. it finally becomes a part of the cathedral that you are trying to make, mm. your job is done. You yeah. only have to trust that his intentions or her intentions are right. Yeah. And if her intentions are right and they are contributing, you will not find attrition. You will also not find that a person has a dull day on the job. There yeah. will be dull days, it is all right, but do not feel the dull days on the job. Yeah. You just you are right. You said you just have to de choke situations, you just have to remove the bottlenecks. Mm. And uh, that is what we have to do here. Yeah. Youngsters coming right out of the college, you know, Vibhor is one example who's also mm. on the call. It's not mm. an act of psychophancy here. Mm. Mm. But we created something a couple of days back, you know, a module on posh. Mm. Now, a module Correct. on posh needs understanding, needs needs Correct. different different elements, different dimensions, different understanding. But, yeah. but it's only that you have to create a module on posh. And he he probably came up with a perfect module with the help of the compliance officer or whoever, a training module which could have Correct. in turn gone into the people and you know to the leaders. Yeah. So so there is no I think it's only trust, it's empathy, a little bit of empathy, a little bit of understanding. Mm. That is what people want after COVID. Mm. You know, is that you you care for them, mm. you know, and, uh, and the job is uh, is done. So I pretty much resonate with the with with your thoughts and the three important points that you made with some Correct. quotes from some of the famous uh, places. I agree mm. with you, Sopna. 
Correct. Yeah, I, I want to ask sense. you, I, I have uh, uh, there's so many directions in which I want to take this conversation, right? So you spoke about, um, uh, you alluded in a way partly towards the importance of stuff like football and uh, bike riding, a lot of your what is called extracurricular activity and how that had a positive impact on your on your career. Tell us a little more about that. How do you think that had a positive impact on your career? Yeah, okay. Now, you know, my my best year of football came mm. uh, came when I, when I was in 12th and that's a mm. board year, you see. Mm. Now, now, there is a family, you know, because there is always pressure, you know, it's a board year, you will have to learn, study mm. for about 16 hours a day, 10 hours, mm. 12 hours a day. Finally, you will have to choose something, make a mark in the school. This is your final year. Mm. But I, I, I realized that none, you know, including my parents or coach or other teachers came in the way of my game, mm. you know, and in, in that was probably the, you know, the, what should I say? Was, was full of, you know, full of football that particular mm. year. Mm. No, no, that's when I realized that, okay. And it happened, you know, I don't know who trusted whom. Mm. Uh, either the parents thought that he's a gone case waste. So therefore allow him to do what he wants to do. Ah. Or, or, or maybe allow him to do what he wants to do. He will responsibly deliver, mm. you know, on, on equally on the studies as well. Or maybe because I, I was, I was sure and I was aware mm. that, uh, Game of football will not be the final life. You know, mm. it's not the calling. It is mm. it is sport. Mm. It is where you've invested. So therefore, you will deliver there. Got but it. nobody stopped. That was point mm. number one. It was always the freedom, you know. Uh, you know, uh, in addition to whatever you're learning, whatever you're studying through books or uh, investing your time in real structured learning, a lot happens when you are interacting with people, when you mm. are interacting, you know, freely in the habitat uh, where you live, where you interact with people, you go out, whether play or or you become street smart by these interactions. A lot yeah. of learning comes from there, yeah. you know, in addition to... And finally, what I've realized is you either you... Either you have that structured learning somewhere, you will have to invest that time in becoming street smart also, and then mm. you will have to find ways... Mm. In order to be, in order to be, what should I say? Uh, you know, in order to be, uh, I'm at a loss of words for that. Mm. Uh, but in order to be, you know, because the world is not only about what you have read in the books. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. I think street smart and encompasses what you're trying to say there in some way. Yeah. yeah. And and that that will teach you a lot of things. Your negotiation skills would come yeah. from there. Yeah, 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 your 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 negotiation skills, your communication skills. In you know, under what situations would you want to uh, deal and interact? Will come from there. Clubbed with what you are learning in a structured yeah. fashion. Yeah. These two things put together is a little bit. Uh, I, I couldn't agree with you more, Dinesh. I think, uh, and the reason why I asked you that is, is I think in a way I wanted to hear what your thoughts are because I, I share a absolute similar sentiment with you uh, on that, right? So um, interestingly, I, you know, I have a five and a half year old son, and he's for over the last six months taken up uh, to cricket in in a in a big way, and and is. Ex almost prodigal for his age if you ask me at five and a half years which is very young uh but you know when you know when we keep thinking and talking about it we're like hey you know what you know we don't care whether this this boy plays this sport professionally or not right however yeah. um, however much he wants to get into the india team right we, you know we don't really care about that we just we we just realize the importance of sports to the overall in a way well-being of a human being and the a lot of the behaviors and attitudes that it teaches uh, a young boy or girl right uh, which they can take into their adult life in such a big way and I, if you ask me the biggest one is um, you know the that you win and lose right in a game right <laughs> as you do in life right uh, you win and lose every day that you play if you think about it right so today you played a game tomorrow you'll win one you'll lose one you'll win one you lose one sometimes even when your team wins you could have played badly right and that's why me and my wife are very happy that he's he's in a way chosen a team sport right uh, to participate in because 
uh, like you said, the interpersonal skills that comes with playing a sport, right? Uh, the street smartness that comes with it, the just the attitude of winning and losing uh, and understanding that at a very early age, these are extremely important uh, things to grow up with and help most people immensely, if you ask me, right? Not yeah. in a small way, but really immensely. And that's why I, I would encourage, in a way, every parent to expose their child, if they're interested, of course, uh, yeah. to a lot of extracurricular activity, right? and not just focus their energy on one thing and one thing only because as as you we've seen like you me probably all of us are are good examples of people that did relatively well in their career by balancing both the both. um you know the 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 study books along with the extracurricular right so there are right. enough shining examples uh, um of that and i think that's very very important so i i couldn't agree with you more absolutely you're right yeah, yeah, yeah. And, the, you know, especially the story of failure that you spoke about, you know, and that learning at such an early age of saying, you know, I failed one game, you know, and the next game, I just decided to tweak it at a you know very young age. I tweaked my mind in terms of saying that I need to be fearless and I need to approach um, this topic. And, you know, I did that and I, 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 so I played the best game I ever played. Right. And that's a lesson that nobody can teach you uh, unless you experience it in some way. Right. Yeah, you, that's right. That's right. Right. You have to experience it. So, Mike, uh, I have loads of questions in it for you because it's such an interesting conversation. Tell me, how does one, and if there's no answer for it, like just say I don't know, right? Or there's no answer to this because there are so many questions to which if somebody asks me, I say, you know, I don't know how the how it happens, right? So this You're is right. one of those one of those questions of saying, how does one become fearless um, in their approach towards life or a project or you know how do you you know bring that fearlessness or in a way confidence um in you is there an answer to it or tell that's, me tell me about this I, I think i think that's very that's very personal to be yeah. very honest with you yeah. uh that's also now i understand that is very personal but at the same time uh, the circumstances make you fearless mm. you really have to go through an experience in order to be you know in order to be fearless or fearful or uh, you know whatever mm. if the fearless is the only only thing here mm. but 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 i would only suggest that uh, that if you attempt to do something please attempt to do something uh, there are various things you know that we keep experiencing in life uh, fear of failure is one such thing mm. in the industry that i work for in the frontline person who is at the bottom of the pyramid in a hierarchical setup mm. faces it nine times a day and yeah. succeeds 10th time you know, so so that guy is fearless, mm. maybe because he has failed nine times. Uh, mm. So so unless you unless you really swim, unless you really drive, unless you really play, unless you really put in an effort, mm. uh, you will not experience that. Mm. I don't think there is a formula or a recipe that one can eat and become fearless. You are right. Mm. I also don't think uh, there is only a philosophical response to this. I only don't think that I I will be able to transfer you know my own my own fearlessness or fearfulness or, uh, you know, the lack of it or more of it mm. into someone else. But I think uh, programs like this, mm. at least sharing of experience is very, very important, mm. you know, and uh, maybe these anecdotes that you and me carry or others that you have interviewed or you'll be interviewing in future, if they mm. carry and if they put this on table, mm. maybe people would want to learn. And I see a lot of people learn through stories only people, mm. a lot of people learn, uh, draw inspiration from uh, movies and draw inspiration and fearlessness from uh, whatever you watch, whatever you see, whatever you experience around you mm. in the right and the wrong sense, both. Mm. Uh, for us, right thing is more important to be picked up. Got it. So, There's so no fixed I, formula. You're right. Cannot be injected. Correct. Correct. Can't be injected for sure. But yeah, I, I like what you shared, right? Because I think, um, I, I think sometimes we underestimate the importance of uh, exposure in the form of a book, or exposure in the form of a movie, or exposure in the form of a podcast that you, you know, or a show that you may, you know, listen to, and and that could that could have a, a great impact on on people for sure, no doubt about it. Um, you know, I, I I would keep saying that you need to be very careful about your media diet in some way, right? You know, what is the diet of stuff that you're consuming, you know, and if you start consuming stuff, which is, which is positive, oh, using you. positive yeah. as a very, very broad term, um, I think that becomes very, very important. And I, I can tell you that that's become a, um, 
uh, I can attribute whatever little success that I've had also to that right kind of exposure that I've given myself through the years um, in terms of reading, say, autobiographies or, you know, just watching a lot of positive stuff uh, and positive stories from other people has had a tremendous impact on my on my life. Right. Uh, so I, I agree with you. That may not be the answer that but that could be definitely one thing that impacts people in, in some way. Right. And people mm -hmm. should look at consuming positive material for for sure, um, there's right. no doubt that those things matter, right? You spoke about, um, you again, you know, you didn't really talk about it, but I'm going in that direction. As an HR head, Dinesh, what are the changes pre and post COVID that you've seen? Tell me the two or three kind of stark differences that you're seeing um, in people working in organizations. Yeah. So, uh, all right, the first thing that I see is, uh, people are choosing employers who are more caring mm. you know, versus uh, versus the earlier era. Mm. Uh, people are also moving away from prescription to uh, or from prescription direction and guidance to allow me to experiment. Mm. You know, because they want to live life the way they have not lived life earlier. Mm. Mm. And uh, so what is important is uh, another thing is uh, uh, yeah, trust I spoke about. So care mm. and trust is one. Same thing. Mm. They would want uh, organizations to have empathy, you know. Mm. And, and trust me, empathy before COVID was mm. not there on our uh, value board. Mm. Okay, And empathy was really introduced in the year 2021. Yeah. Uh, because we really realized and, uh, mm. you know, the leadership. And it it did not come as uh, as a statement or as, as a pretense, you know, mm. on the value board. But we were working on this and we thought empathy is one important thing that everybody, uh, you know, not sympathy of COVID, but empathy mm -hmm. that understand me, please. Mm -hmm. It is very, very important for you to understand. Mm -hmm. Another thing is uh, that organizations were less listening earlier are more listening now. So mm -hmm. aspect of communication, again, it, 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 it hints towards prescription or guidance to you know allow me yeah. to operate the way i want to operate yeah uh, the organizations uh, the people are expecting organizations to be more tolerant not only mm. in terms of that i should be allowed to work from home mm. but but also cognitive uh, you know uh, tolerance that mm. look this is the way i can function this mm. is what my assets are this is mm. can you really allow me to choose a project over asking me to do a particular project mm -hmm. trust me more so again and again it goes back to trust me more mm -hmm. i am not here to cheat i am mm -hmm. here to you know for you and me to stay together in this and succeed is more important than your mm -hmm. win mm -hmm. so it is win win so interesting demanded mm -hmm. uh, and uh, these are certain things which they come to my mind immediately that's how it has changed so what is underlying thing here is empathy trust and care Mm. allow me to function we are equal in this mm. yeah so not not only not only equity and that and you would have seen a lot of dni initiatives getting mm. now other mm. other important thing that i have i've seen in pre and the post era in my or on or organization is <clears throat> that uh, a job is a package where working on a desk or working on computer or doing MIS or doing artificial intelligence or doing IT mm. or doing HR is not the only thing. Mm. Is there a possibility where I can work on cross-functional projects? Mm. Possibility where you will allow me to operate in your CSR domain or where there are limited people who are getting exposed to. I mm. would want to visit the village that the company or some of the designated selected officials are going. I really want to contribute. Now, this mm. is when people have started sympathizing and empathizing with the, what has happened because people are people are human beings they they got impacted mm. you know because of covid they have seen mm. death they have seen negative things happening around them mm. they have seen that people have struggled and suffered and they have seen their plights if they have not experienced themselves but they have seen others yeah. suffering yeah. that learning yeah. has happened through other somebody else's suffering also so yeah. they have they have they've come forward and they said mm. i want to be a part of your csr initiative allow me to go to jalna or far off places and i would want to do some service mm. i would really like to contribute mm. that is a different dimension of a human being who was otherwise running in a rat, rat race who was otherwise running in that i have to repay my education loans first then i will be ready to pick up another loan and then i'll be ready to pick up another loan mm. Other thing that I've seen is that people are now more aware of and demanding, you know, aware and demanding about their uh, their well-being. Mm. 
which mm. includes their mental well-being. Mm. Uh, they have started asking about benefits which are less tangible and more of uh, non-tangible things, mm. you know, which could include uh, a package with a counselor also, which would include a greater insurance as well, which would include uh, the well-being of the family members at home mm. and, and all that. We have also seen that more many organizations are now open to allow their family members to work for their for the same setup. You know, mm. there used to be policies where a family member or an immediate family member cannot work in the same organization, so to say. Mm. Many organizations mm. are very open to this. Mm. Uh, the companies have opened up. They said, mm. okay, bring in uh, flexibility in uh, not only in timings, but assignments, but, mm. but, but the roles that you choose. So mm. a lot of things have, uh, and, and, and otherwise this learning would have happened in 10 years. Mm. Uh, maybe COVID, a negative event like COVID has fast-tracked it. Yeah, it has yeah. happened in just three years time. Yeah, yeah. It's so interesting, Dinesh. You know, the thing is that uh, w one of the benefits I have of talking to so many HR heads across so many industries is, you know, you really figure out what are the things that are common um, and what are the things that are different. And more often than not, irrespective of which industry we're talking about, uh, the big thing that hits me, Dinesh, all the time is most things across all industries are all common, right? Because I've asked this question to now so many uh, off off camera and on on camera ask this question to so many HR heads, and you'll be shocked to know that they have the exact same things to say as you have, right? And none of this is prompted. If anybody watches the eight or nine interviews that are there, they'll see the same thing said in different words, and it's it's that means it's really happening, right? And for any organization that's not keeping pace with that, it's definitely going to um, be sidelined, if you ask me, right? So when you spoke about you know, people being a lot more dim aware and demanding, right? L more or less the exact same words are used, right? That people have become more, more aware and more demanding. And it's not all about the, in a way, the CTC, right? It's it's about the benefits, which could be the culture that are is provided in that particular organization. Like you said, the counselor, the therapy, the, you know, what all are you doing in a holistic way for your people, which is not just limited to one angle, everyone has spoken about that right um you know and which i think is a good thing right i think that raised awareness that people have um is good both for them personally and professionally if you ask me right i think another big point that everybody speaks about is the importance um of an organization uh Improving its culture, which if you ask me, a subset of that is the whole element of care, which is very important, the element of trust, the element of empathy that we need to show both as a culture and individual towards our particular people. So I, I'm seeing that as a, as, a, as a big trend that everybody is talking about. And the other one in terms of people's desire today to work on what they think is important, what they think is interesting, what they think is going to be a win-win and value add both for the company and themselves, right? So they're also demanding when it comes to the kind of work that they want to do, right? And I, I'm seeing all of these as very, I am seeing and through my interactions with HR heads like you, I'm seeing this as a trend that is happening across uh, across the board and which I think is a net positive if you ask me. Absolutely. I mean, you've You've summarized it very well, and with your own uh, inputs of having interacted with so many people, yeah, uh, people have people have started. Uh, you know, happiness as as a phrase, as a word, mm. you know, it has become uh, very important. All yeah. of a sudden, we we have been conducting surveys. This is the second time that we have conducted a happiness survey in the organization. Yeah. You know, yeah, where yeah. Uh, the number of surveys itself have gone up. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, because uh, and and in genuine sense, you know, mm. trust me, organizations across industry, you're right, across mm. industry, irrespective of where you work, yeah, where you go to work, where you are associated with, but people yeah. have started listening, and and yeah. all of a sudden, companies have become listening places, listening yeah. organizations. Yeah, yeah, I think that's and quite amazing. Without, there are there are companies who are uh, who if earlier did not have a retaliatory policy. They are having to tell you, just just be silent and listen. Do not yeah. try to, yeah. No, do not try to judge. A person will come and open up, yeah. and uh, that itself will make a make the culture better yeah. and the overall organization better. Yeah, it absolutely. Time and it definitely will take some time because it's a big shift, big change, but uh, it will happen. Yeah, and I think you know uh, this has been a firm belief for many years, right? That 
uh, your work is usually the place where you spend the most amount of time uh, in your adult life, right? Uh, and if those places can't bring about the right culture, which of course has a direct impact on your overall well-being, um, you know, that's not a very, very good place to be in. So I, I'm sure that uh, a very tragic event like COVID has accelerated uh, companies being aware about their culture, companies being more aware about you know, how their people are reacting to stuff. I think that's that's very, very important, right? Uh, without a doubt. Absolutely. Dinesh, a couple of questions, right? Um, so as a new person entering the workforce, irrespective of which industry they're joining, right? What would be the two or three skills that you think are most important in 2023, for somebody entering the workforce? What would be those three skills? And I'll also tell you what my follow-up question is going to be, right? After that, my follow-up question then is going to be, because my first question is around just professionals in general joining any stream across any company. And my follow-up question is going to be an HR professional in specific entering the workforce today. What are the two, three things required for that, right? So I want you in a way to divide these two and, and answer the first one first and then move to the second one. You're on mute. Fair, fair. I got both, and uh, yeah. I I will, you know, try to give my uh, my yeah. point of view on this. See, what has become important uh, is uh, from a from a competency, you know, point of view. Somebody mm -hmm. who is entering the workforce at this point of time is the skills are changing. We all agree. Mm -hmm. You know, as a result, you will see that uh, I will tie. I'll speak about a very micro thing. When this time, this year, when we conducted our own assessment center, mm. uh, <coughs> we said, okay, <coughs> digital mindset is very, very important. Mm. Now, digital mindset as a competency, <coughs> what does it mean? Should it only apply to technology teams? Should it mm. only apply to someone who is working on artificial intelligence and all that? We said, whatever we do, digital mindset is important. And it is mm. not digital, but it is mindset which is important. Mm. So, therefore, you will find that everything that we do is important, whether it is learning, you know, yeah. even these learning modules, you know, brick and mortar model of going to a school uh, and learning uh, has now. So, so most of our, you know, people who have, who have joined higher education courses are not going to the schools and sitting across the professor and talking, but they are uh, using modules like upgrad or some of the other modules that we yeah. introduced for our people and not only technology team. Now, what has become important is, People keep saying that some of these jobs will get redundant, you know, good, good systems will throw good reports, good analytics and blah, 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 that will happen. But having said this, let's understand that critical thinking, innovative mindset, digital mindset in what you do, mm. learning new technologies, demonstrating a different type of leadership. Mm. Yeah. And, and, uh, and one most important thing that the current workforce already have in them is finding unconventional solutions to hard problems of business. Mm. Now, if mm. these four or five things that, mm. that, that can, that these guys, and of course, these are all, these are all based on the spine here is, or the nervous center here is the, the ownership or your own original thought process. Mm. If that individual who is joining the workforce today, and I would like to believe that the current generation thinks and thinks differently because they are more here to think because they are not, they don't belong to my era, mm. you know, where uh, things started differently and, and, and because of the transformation, it is now landed elsewhere. Mm. They've started at a point where things are already better. Mm. So they, therefore they can think, you know, mm. and if they can think these things are very, very important, applying their critical and analytical thinking, innovation mm. on the job, practical mm. innovations, and finding unconventional solutions to these problems of business. Mm -hmm. That's where they will make a mark. Got it. So this is for the particular piece. Now, now Correct. other thing is... I, I'll just say, I, I just yeah, want to quickly yeah. do a, a, a summary so that our audience can take something out. So I think number one that you spoke about is anybody entering the workforce today, very important for them to have a digital mindset. 
um i think that's important so in a way they can't have a fear for technology right or they can't have a fear in a way uh, to go digital because uh, we need to make the most of the digital world in each and every form and if we don't use the advantages of that i think as people and organizations we will be we will be behind i think the second thing that you spoke about is people's ability to do critical or analytical thinking about stuff right so to be good thinkers so that they can analyze problems and therefore find solutions to those problems and the third thing connected to problems that you spoke about is the ability to innovate and the ability in a way to think out of the box uh, around hard problems that companies have right and really be able to wear a fresh cap on that and besides that you spoke about i think the overall concept of taking ownership right um of whatever you're doing so these would be your four things for yeah. anybody entering the workforce today uh, for them yeah. to build a skills so basically the thinking and saying you know saying yeah. what they they really want to say that you know some of the solutions that the regular guys like me yeah cannot bring in you know mm. and those can be brought by uh, these individuals who have fresh thought process fresh thinking yeah. Yeah. So yeah. most of them are living the life of uh, they think therefore they are yeah and uh, yeah yeah. So, yeah. so coming to HR, HR second. folks, anybody finishing their MBA in HR and entering the workforce, um, right. what what would you ask them to do? What would be the two or three skills that you think are important in today's HR world for them? Okay, one one <clears throat> suggestion to these mm -hmm. HR guys, even before you know, budding HR professionals or who yeah. may not have entered or cho have chosen their yeah. their own uh, their own subjects specialization. Yeah. Yeah. would be choose a subject based on their own strengths mm. and not based on, uh, you know, what is happening in the industry. For example, mm. uh, most of the guys that I speak, you know, at mm. campuses are very, very encouraged to join operations because they mm. think everybody will land up in a supply chain job mm. you know, with one of these biggies, mm. you know, and uh, and guys who, who have great, strengths mm. in on mm. the people front interpersonal front they ignore they turn a blind eye to those strengths and based on uh, what is happening in the market or some of these fads which will stay of course there is mm. there are great careers there but yeah. they get encouraged motivated or influenced by yeah. uh, you know what is happening currently in the industry forgetting about so first is choose based on the strengths mm. yeah because uh, and there are tools available in the market to understand your own strengths if you mm. can't uh, rely upon a particular tool or an apparatus that you have go consult people mm. go read on platforms and understand your own strengths do some assessments and then choose now having chosen hr having you know uh, having joining the hr bandwagon or industry for hr mm. i think uh, gone are the days where we we thought I am a bound because I have studied HR. I can, I am authorized a license to counsel people and mm. give care. Mm. That's not the case. Mm. It is important for HR guys to shut up and listen to people again. Mm. You know? mm. It is not that uh, you are a superior power because in the industry, any industry, it is understood mm. that you are at a particular level, you know, and if you belong to a VP grade, you already are entitled to a senior vice president thought process. Mm. That's not it. You know, if you are a senior vice president, you are entitled to an EVP just because HR draws a lot of power, you mm -hmm. know. But then uh, when you think that you are already powerful, the learning will stop immediately. Mm -hmm. You would think that you are entitled license to counseling. You think that you have read many more books than 110 books uh, versus 100 books read by some other guy. So, so that thought process must stop here. You mm -hmm. are joining equal. Uh, you, you also do not have an escalator or an elevator ride that you can get in mm. order to reach the top mm. no because uh, because there is a scrutiny you may like it or do not like it you you should not first of all the underlying thing is you should not fear for people's opinion i understand mm. what you want to do do it but then at the same time you are open to more scrutiny mm. uh, you are also will you will also be challenged by a, by a data driven workforce so therefore mm. you yourself first thing will be your own approach will have to be data driven mm. you know your approach your own approach will have to be analytical Mm. you do not only hire people and give it to because hiring is no more an hr guy's job you know mm. you only participate you only set processes you only set the pave the path mm -hmm. you are the custodians of the process you are mm. also the person who would ask right questions on cultural fronts behavioral fronts and, mm. and blah 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 mm. but you are not the only one participating in the interview process mm. you will be asked questions you will have to have the data you will have to have uh, because 
classically it was understood that you know hiring is hr's job so therefore whatever the hr guy will ask questions and find out and will facilitate hiring and will issue an appointment mm. so those are you know things sitting on the fringes but the, mm. the core is are you choosing right therefore you need to be of you know learn it of a different type of a you also need to have the industry knowledge most of these hr guys are inward looking mm. you know we we were mm. i was mm. uh, uh, but but what is happening in the industry is very very important benchmarking mm. is important what mm. is happening outside of the industry is equally important mm. you know there is no more relationship of giver and taker mm. you know that i give you these policies forget about mm. those days because mm. people are creating policies people are mm. demanding for policies mm. so data driven you will be asked question why this insurance and why not this insurance why this much mediclaim why not this much mediclaim mm. you know and and why do you are asking me to so be ready be mm. ready with those responses mm. another is uh, is the job of the hr guy not to interview and to exit so mm. not at the both ends of entry and the exit door mm. but it is important that you are continuously working to provide your people with the tools with the tools to learn mm. you know create those the ecosystem create the right atmosphere create the right drive instill mm. the right drive amongst people that continuous learning is very very important mm. by saying continuous learning is very very important the job is not done you mm. will have to really create those platforms and Got also it. take the horse to the well Got you it. know yeah that is again very important thing and and it is not a trainee or a management trainee's job alone it is mm. all it starts at the management trainee level at hr in mm. hr to to the topmost guy in hr everybody mm. has to and it is no more talking Mm. it is no more about lip service it is about actually creating something mm. Mm. till you will fail in encouraging most of the people to go to the well and drink water that will happen but you cannot give up yeah so that is the most important thing you have not only have duty towards those individuals but organizational duty because continuous learning as i said first at 20 you become something you know in the current world 2021 because it is about skill based thing it is no more mm. about graduation it's about mm. skill you know mm. an organization started hiring for skills no more mm. graduation 21 21 to 20 40 you have already done something achieved and accomplished mm. something because you are already on a fast track the world around you is also moving fast therefore you will move fast yeah the remaining 20 years you will do something else so learning has to happen continuously got it and that is providing that ecosystem is hr guys responsibility got it what thing is employee experience creating mm. work culture mm. it is those are the softer aspects of the hr guy mm. again hr is the at some places hr is a part of it hr is a catalyst in some places hr is only the ecosystem creator you do not need to be at the front you see mm. it's no more tom toming about own you know hr guys and these are the initiatives by hr mm. but you are are you are you listening making the organization aware are you helping people to adopt to the right thing or whatever are your duties towards the organization are they getting fulfilled and not mm. and then outcome will be production or productivity outcome could be le- less attrition more retention outcome could be a workforce which is which is nimble footed which is always ready to take up assignments outcome mm. would be an engaged workforce mm. measure all that measure mm. all that and open it to the world Mm. also gone are the days where the hr used to be a translucent function everything mm. goes i i'll secretly keep all the data uh, information about not only about employee but compensation rewards people mm. understand compensation and rewards better than even some of the hr guys mm. got it know. got it so, so 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 that's where that mindset change shift will have to happen and finally right. once again i think you know start trust more and more people got it uh, for the people who are joining the workforce please demand and is the mm. message for please demand for those those things those cross functional projects mm. ask for that trust and mm. make sure that where you are trusted stay where you are not mm. trusted you demand for it first give the organization the opportunity correct that, you know demand for that care if you don't get get it there because i have seen many smaller organizations have aligned themselves to what the company or the people in the company are demanding mm. new new guys can bring in a lot of change mm. uh, you know even the even some of your statements some of your values will change two to three years mm. and that is only possible when the younger workforce is joining and asking for things 
Got it. Got it. So I think if I have to kind of summarize your answer for a budding professional, you've spoken about a lot of things, but I think uh, number one uh, would be listen to people, right? So develop that key ability as an HR professional to um, listen to your colleagues, because if you can't do that, then you really can't do anything else uh, if you're an HR professional. I think you, again, spoke about the importance of, you know, data-driven and analytical skills for an HR person. And, uh, you know, this is another uh, Dinesh trend that is coming out in my conversations with HR heads, because earlier, what, you know, people would get into HR thinking that if I'm a people's person only, I should get into HR. And I think like all streams, whether it's supply chain, finance, uh, marketing, sales, everything is becoming very data driven today, right? And and very, uh, you know, um, the analytics of that data also is becoming very important to companies. So I think it's important for budding HR professionals to really build those skills so that they can be valuable to, um, you know, their companies. And also, I think uh, you spoke about, uh, you know, ensuring that you have exposure to um, what's happening in your industry, right? I, I think that's extremely important for an HR person to know. I think both things, right? What's happening, having a deep, uh, uh, ha having your ear to the ground in terms of what's happening in your company, including the um, company finances, what's going well, what are the new products, so on and so forth, right? So being very thorough with that, but also knowing what's happening in that overall industry that you belong to as well, right? So uh, yeah, having that overview of stuff has become, I think, very important to HR professionals is there's no doubt about it, okay? We've run out of time, Dinesh, but I'm going to ask you one last question, right? Please. What keeps you up at night as an HR head? And even if you don't want to answer that in particular in context, say, to your company, right? Generally, in today's time and age, what is keeping the HR head of uh, companies up at night? Okay. Uh how 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 to retain talent ah okay. okay and continuously how to retain talent how to keep them motivated how mm. to keep them going you mm. know in the system mm. and and it's not, the worry is not their productivity worry is mm. not that they will contribute mm. the worry is that they should stay yeah so by staying in the organization if they if they stay if they are motivated mm. enough mm if the right pay mix and if the right mix of the opportunity is offered, then my yeah. job is done. Productivity yeah. will come automatically. Got so it's it. no more about that. I need to be, uh, I need to, I or HR function needs to really continuously understand and see the dashboards where the production is happening or no. Mm. Their requirements are met. Mm. The workforce is so honest. Mm. People are so honest to themselves first followed mm. by where they are working. You know, and 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 finally, see, I'll tell you, sense of belongingness is is very very important. And if mm. we have been able to create that sense of belongingness that I belong to this place because I spent fifteen hours here, mm. because not only the bread and butter comes from here, but I get respect mm. and dignity, mm. and I get challenges, I get mm. opportunities in the same system, I get juice for my mind, I also get I feel empowered. Mm. If all those things are done, mm. they will produce. So production is not the worry. Got How it. do I keep them with all these ingredients is the is the worry. And yeah. trust me, any person leaving the team at this point of time, team in the sense, team of 6,000 plus people, yeah. worries uh, HR guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Good. I, I, and I, another point, if I may add, Sopnil, yeah. one last point. And in the process, upskilling is very, very important. Yeah. You know, like a very important thing that comes to my mind, you know, uh, where it was was said by somebody very famous that it's not about uh, you know the, the 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 illiterates of the future are not those who can't read mm. <laughs> i think you also spoke about this somewhere yeah, right. yeah. but those who cannot learn unlearn and relearn yeah yeah how yeah. do we create opportunities for them to continuously learn and upstream yeah, yeah. very very important and yeah, that's absolutely. where these kind of partnerships are important that's where the partnership that we have here yeah. is very very important. so you already yeah. created a well how yeah. do we take the horse to that well yeah. is, is my duty. And that may give me some sleepless nights. Yeah. That's where I'll stop. Yeah, I think that's such a nice nice note to end on because uh, um, I, I think that's a universal problem. You know, your, your our ability to 
uh, engage, you know, retain, engage our talent uh, and ensure our talent keeps getting better. That's, I think, a universal problem. And that is something that's going to keep both HR heads and companies on their toes. But I think that's that's a net positive for us, uh, you know, the, when we are as HR people or industry leaders kept on our toes because of this, I think what we will we will put out to people and in turn put out to the country, I think will be a, a, a lot, lot better, right? We often measure, you know, our, our progress in terms of GDP growth, which is extremely important, right? Uh, but I also often... Uh, think that other measures of measuring progress also are very important, right? Like, like you know, the standard of living of people, right? The overall mental well-being of, of people, right? And how they're feeling on a day-to-day -day basis. Those are such important parameters, difficult to measure, but important parameters for us to truly become, uh, um, uh, you know, a, a leader uh, as, a, as a country. So I think that is very, very important for us. And, and this is a small step that we can take as industry leaders in that particular direction. Yeah, very well summarized. You're right, Supil. And that's the that's a net positive you said. You're right. Yeah, uh, absolutely. It's a good problem to have. Uh, yes, 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 absolutely. Yes. Uh, Dinesh, it was an absolute pleasure uh, doing this show with you and doing this particular conversation with you. You've shared a lot of interesting things with a lot of passion, which is very much like you, uh, even off camera. So I'm I'm very happy that you were truly being yourself. And I've, of course, learned a lot of stuff. And each one of these conversations that I have with successful professionals like you is often a trigger for me, uh, gets me thinking on a lot of different things. So I've thoroughly enjoyed the conversation and I hope um, our partnership uh, continues going into the future uh, and I hope this friendship that is developing also continues right so thank you very yeah. much for being thank here you. and I, I will see you soon